Welcome back to Watching Film and Varnador Films. I am Seth Varnador. I'm a former high school and college football coach. Now I break down film here on YouTube. Today we're going to take a quick look at the South Carolina Gamecocks before their game against Florida this weekend. Let's dive right in. The South Carolina offense, um, they've got some talented guys. Their best player is probably uh, Marshawn Lloyd. Really good running back you'll see here. He's got some ability in the open field. He's a strong runner. He's got some speed. They get the ball to him in a variety of ways. They use a bunch of different personnel groupings. So you're going to see some 11. You're going to see some 12. Like here, you got some 12 personnel. You got two tight ends there up top. You'll see some 20, I think. You'll see some 21. There's your two tight ends. So you're going to see a bunch of different personnel groupings from this uh, offense. And Lloyd is kind of the bell cow back. He was hurt last week against Vanderbilt. Supposed to be back this week. They've got other good ones, but he's the best. They also hand the ball to Jaheim Bell, who is also kind of listed as a tight end. Uh, he's a good player as well, but uh, Lloyd is kind of the best of the bunch for sure. Right here, uh, this kind of gives you a look at this. Is, I, I don't believe this is Lloyd here, but you can see they use a lot of motion and here they go motion in the split zone look to really get flow over the top and the back does a good job getting it in the end zone so motion and misdirection are big in their offense here you actually have an extra offensive lineman in the game so you have six offensive linemen in the game and they split him out and put a tight end kind of off the ball between the tackle and the extra lineman there. So interesting wrinkle there on the goal line. But misdirection, motion, trickery a little bit is a big part of their offense. You watch the game against Vanderbilt, they got in some wildcat. For some reason, uh, a lot of video of that game does not exist online. So uh, you'll have to take my word for it. But here you see a reverse. They're doing stuff like this all the time. Use misdirection here. With the motion and the play action, and then kind of roll out to it to get a nice, easy pass, easy completion there for a big play against Texas A&M. Here's Jaheim Bell. They uh, in the passing game, he's a he's a big factor. You see that catch radius he's got there. Spencer Rattler, the quarterback, um, when you keep him clean, he does a pretty good job. They run a lot of shallows. You'll see crossing routes. Uh, you'll see a lot of dig routes. Um, and Rattler, when he's clean, can make some tight window throws here. There's Austin Stogner, who also transferred from Oklahoma with him. See the catch radius there. Nice throw up high. Goes up and gets it. Some more tight window throws here where you're, you're kind of taking the one-on-one -on -one shot, putting it in a good spot where only your guy can get it. Same thing, up high and away. Great catch again by Stogner. So, They've got some pieces for sure, and Rattler can use his legs. He's not a bad athlete. He's a pretty decent athlete. He can use his legs, and those are kind of a plus for him. And they use him getting out of the pocket a lot to create passing plays. They're also a big screen team. You're going to see a lot of quick throws, a lot of screens, a lot of passes behind the line of scrimmage are mixed in here, and they've got some guys that can play. One of their big issues, though, is I don't think they're great in pass pro. They're giving up over two sacks a game. And you can kind of see it here. Both tackles kind of get beat. Right tackle doesn't do a bad job. Left tackle gets beat. Bringing pressure here forces a fumble. That's one of Rattler's big issues. He's kind of turnover prone. He'll fumble when he's hit. You see another one here. Left tackle just gets beat. And he'll also throw you some. Uh, here's an example where he kind of tries to force one in, right? If you throw a bunch of those tight window throws, you might force a few as well. Here's one where he tries to force one in there to Stogner, I believe, and it gets picked off by Kentucky. Defensively, they're pretty – they got some guys up front that can rush the passer. They're not uh, – they kind of unloaded on Kentucky a little bit with the backup quarterback, but they're not um, not great in the run game, uh, but they can get after the passer. DB play, there's times where they play pretty tight here. The corner plays Evan Stewart pretty well. We saw Evan Stewart last week. He's a pretty tough guy to deal with. But he stays right in his hip pocket here, 
a really bad throw, uh, bad decision by the quarterback here. Picks and almost get taken back for a touchdown. They end up having to settle for a field goal on that drive. Um, and then here's one where it's kind of a simulated pressure look where they got a bunch of guys in line of scrimmage. They actually drop back some defensive tackles here. So they'll get creative, and then that gets him free. You see these two guys are kind of looking at the D tackles, like, where are you going? Gets that one free. I think um, – Against Florida, they're going to be pretty aggressive. They have pretty aggressive safety play. You'll see the safety here come down and really play hard on this motion and throw right there. They play the run pretty hard. That kind of sets you up for boot, which Florida loves to run a ton of boot. See Kentucky hitting it here. Texas A&M having some success with it here. I'll be interested to see what their plan is for Florida's boot. Here is kind of another look at boot, but also kind of uh, a look at the safety. Safety play. You're going to have the post here by one. He's going to flat and then wheel. Flat, and then you got the crosser coming as well on the boot action. You get the wheel up the sideline here. I, I think their safeties are kind of one to play run. And there's some spots you can take advantage. I also like this look for Florida. Back to a nub side, even even with the tight end attached over here. Texas A&M's got him here. Even with the tight end attached, if you're any type of uh, quarterback run game, I mean, you can just arc, read him, and now you have some really interesting stuff uh, coming back the other way. Texas A&M goes with a counter, and you see here that there's not a real – tough edge over there in that look short yardage you see Texas A&M is able to get some movement and after watching them against Florida last week they, they kind of struggled to run the ball in Florida outside of a couple of explosives um, I think Florida will be able to run the ball in this game there's not a, a, a at times some depending on the packages South Carolina has in I don't think they run super well uh, on the second level at linebacker in particular there's some plays you can make on the perimeter, especially with a little misdirection. Make them kind of run sideline to sideline with your faster guys. I'll be interested to see maybe Florida gets with a little um, two back looks to put some more speed on the field there with a guy like ETN maybe. Quarterback run that has not been their strong suit this year. As you see here, Cook taking off. For a big run. And then you can see the safeties here just to get a one-on-one -on -one pass coverage. Getting beat. And see how aggressively they pay run. Should open up some play action stuff for Florida. So I think play actions and RPO. Getting safeties and linebackers aggressively playing run. Opening up that shot right there. And then they've had some turnover luck. Like this is, uh, you know, <laughs> that's kind of right place, right time. And then this one's somehow even worse right place right time uh so they've had a little bit of turnover luck defensively so if you look at their turnover margin you include those two in there it's kind of even worse than it looks so um where do they make up for some of their deficiencies is in the in the special teams game right beamer balls alive and well here's a blocked punt i think they lead the nation in block kicks just on the other, just kind of on their side of it down a punt inside the 10 here you see, even if, if he doesn't fair catch it, you've got a guy on the goal line ready for that bounce. So you're not – it's going to be tough. If you win the field position battle in this game, I think you definitely feel like you got a really good chance to win. Um, and then, you know, they can score on special teams too. Here's the opening kickoff against Texas A&M. Take it back for a touchdown here. Florida's going to have to be on the special teams, offense and defense to win this one. I think they should win. If they play clean, who knows if they will play clean, though. That's always uh, the biggest factor with this Florida team. Can they play clean multiple weeks in a row, not turn the ball over? If they do, I think they've got a good chance to win the game.